you know, just just uh, shop around, do, do, do your shopping, and uh, like I say, if you already have if you already have a handgun, then if you want me or somebody to check it out, I'd be glad to. And uh, yeah, because the problem guns, like unlike uh, silver coins, they do wear out. Well, silver coins could have been so good. But what I'm saying, if you have an old gun, you need to get somewody that's pretty knowledgeable with guns to check it out. Because they get, sometimes if they've been fired off, they get loose. And uh, we need to be just checked out and make sure that they work properly. And, and I would recommend that if you are serious about this, to, to get someone and uh, get them to go to the range with you. If, if you need to be familiar with these, with these things. We're a little bit guilty there. We haven't been out and shot in a long time. So I would recommend going to the range. And a lot of people now are talking about their uh, concealed carry. I can tell you a, a quick story that's kind of funny in that. I mentioned Hope Taylor. And uh, he came through a, the other day and we picked him up at the airport. And uh, we had not gone maybe a half mile, just gotten outside the airport. How's your family? How's it working? And fine. He said, Guess what I've done? What? I've applied for my concealed carry. This is Dr. Hope Taylor, ILE, you know? And I said, oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, he said, and I put my application on Facebook. Oh, oh really? Okay, so we had quite a good discussion. We talked about it. So the other day, he, uh, I guess he texted me or emailed a picture of his, he had gotten the permit. And in the state of Georgia, you sign the deal, give them your fingerprints, pay the fee, and they send you your license. Wow. You don't have to take a train, you don't have to know how to shoot. <laughs> I said, man, I thought Texas was a wild west. I said, wait, 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 we've got some regulations out here in Texas. So anyway, Hope has his concealed carry license now. And his wife's getting off there. So you can see it, you tell everybody. <laughs> He put it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very encouraged about it. I was very encouraged about it because that, that really uh, inspired me. I don't have my concealed carry. I don't have a license at all. We've talked about it time and time again. We just never have pulled the trigger and done it. I'm not sure. That's a, that's a, a whole different issue. Uh, by the way, by the way, something that, that I'm going to tell you. I don't think I have it on the slide. But in the state of Texas, you can carry a loaded handgun in your car legally. No doubt about it. I knew that, but to make sure I went and looked it up again before our class. It has to be concealed, not laying open the dash, not laying open on the seat. Now, the way I understand it, that has, has, has been legal somewhat for many years. But there was some controversy over the definition of the word traveling. It was before 2007, it was legally carry handgun while traveling. But they had put some definitions so on it to where if you got stopped or whatever, that, they, that the interpretation of what traveling could mean. Some people thought across state uh, county lines, some people thought some other things. So the, so the way I understand it, and you're welcome to check it out, but I, I, I looked at two or three sources that the state legislature went in in 07 and redefined traveling. That if it's in your car and your car's going, you're traveling. Basically. Could be loaded. I'm sorry? Loaded? Yes, yes. Loaded. And concealed. Concealed has to be under the seat or in the glove box or, yeah, or in, yeah. in, your, in your belt. You know, it's kind of hidden Just don't forget to take it out when you get out. <laughs> if it's in your belt. But that's, uh, you know, I, I got to thinking back. I've been, unfortunately, I've had several tickets in the last few years. I've never had any all my life, but here I get to where I drive slow and reasonable, and I get several tickets in the last few years. But, but I've never had a policeman search my car or, or anything. So I'm thinking, well, what would I do? So in my mind, if by some reason I fit the description of somebody they were looking for or whatever and they asked me to step out of the car and we're going to search you further, I think I would say, sir, 
officer, I need to tell you that I have these in, in the glove box or whatever. That, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, Gail got a ticket last week, and uh, she had her gun. She didn't show it to him or anything. They didn't search her car. <laughs> she didn't tell him. She didn't. She didn't mention it. She's following my advice. I keep it. But uh, anyway, that's that's the way it is. And so, so that sort of gives you a little bit of a leeway on this concealed carry thing. Because then, but like that, she comes home at night after meetings or whatnot in Austin, and we live sort of out in the country, and and uh, she keeps that gun. She. Does she carry it in? She leaves it always in the car? Or well, except when I take it in for watching it or whatever. Or, or like if she's going to be at home by herself, like I was telling her, take it in. We've got more than one, so. But when she goes in Austin, it stays in the car. Is that what you mean? Yeah, no, I understand that. What, do, what does she do with it when she gets at home at night? Do you well, leave it sitting in the car or if I, parked out in your driveway? Yeah, she leaves it out there. It, but if I'm not at home, she carries it in with her. <coughs> so y'all pretty well know how things work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ronnie, you used to, you'd, you'd see, I haven't seen in a long time, you used to, you'd see people, especially rural communities, you'd, they'd have the rifle up in the rack in the window of the pickup truck. And that was legal, right? I mean, I always thought if you're, if you're crossing county lines, you're able to carry a, a weapon. <coughs> it's still legal. You can do that. The, the reason they quit doing that is people are stealing the Right. Yeah, the, you know, the, the sale of those type of gun racks went to nothing. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I carried, I used to carry a gun, a, a rifle or a shotgun in my deal all the time. But it got so common that they were being stolen, I think. That, and I think that's still legal. You can carry a long gun with you. Now you can steal a long gun. Yeah, it'd be a little bit hard to, to get to it real fast and whatever, but. But all of these are, are different scenarios of things that, that you could face. And uh, I've had, fortunately, I've never had some of the experiences that I've had some friends uh, run into. But when you're when you're out and about, there's there's all sorts of uh, situations that come up. So we laugh and have a good time with this. But but the thing is, and especially when you get when you get older, I, I wouldn't be able to put. The, in other words, I wouldn't be able to protect you like I was when I was 35 or 25 years old. So it becomes more important to me to be able to have some protection with her. That's just, that's just the way it is. And uh, I just submit to you to pray about these things. Evaluate for yourself. See where you stand, what you think, what the Lord convinces you of. And, and make like your decisions. So, so this is... This is a really good purchase. I'm telling you. I have a deal, a, a motto. I don't like to buy most things, I'll say. Most things that I buy, I don't like to not be able to get my money back or make a little off when I get rid of it. Does that make sense? And these are of such a buy that I think. I've recommended them to several people, and I think that's a, as long as they stay around that price range, that's a tremendous amount of money for a gun. I'm, I'm from the old days. I remember when a, when a deer rival with a scope on it, uh, the going price was $100. I mean, those days are gone. These, you know, the little the little gun or two that I've carried, we bought them back when it was 50 bucks for a used one. You know, those days are gone. We're, I mean, so are, you know, so is 29 cent a gallon gasoline. They went, they went the way, they're gone. You know, so forget about those old days when guns were cheap. There's no such thing anymore. It's cheap guns. You don't want to find amusement. Uh, nope. Nobody wants to sell Nope. Everybody, and, and I want to be nice because some of you had done well. They said, well, Ronnie, let's help me find a handgun. We go, we, we walk, and we search, and we wind up going through the gun show. We stop on our way back at Academy and buy one of these. And then I was in the academy the other day, and they had two of these. And I thought, well, you know, I'd like to have one more, <laughs> one more toy. And uh, so I filled around and went back a couple hours later. They're gone. 
The young lady told me that she sold four of them on the lunch hour, and that people are lined up at the door to get ammunition. The ammunition shelves are empty. You know, they don't know when they're getting more, they don't know when they're getting more guns. So right now, it's not a good time for buying them. It's, it's tough, it's tough right now. But hopefully the smoke will clear and this thing will settle back down like, you know, and we'll be able to get whatever we want, whatever we need. Okay, ammunition. All right, we've got our high class illustration up here. We're, gonna, we're carrying the gun, the handgun. We're putting this kind of a bullet in, right? Okay, there's different kinds of these kind of bullets. There's bullets that are solid like this, that when they hit something, they just go straight through. A jacketed bullet, solid bullet. Okay. If you, God forbid, had to shoot someone in protection of your life or your wife or your husband or your child, you don't want the bullet to go right through them because then they might just come on and hit you in the head or cut your throat or whatever. So we want them. If we're going to have to shoot them, God forbid, we want to tear them up just as bad as we can. We'll do just as much damage as we can. So we're going to get what is called probably some type of a hollow point. There's different kinds of these. And what does that do? Instead of going through whatever it hits, it expands. That hollow point opens up like that, from boom to boom. And hopefully you're going to knock that person, as this thing expands, then you're going to take enough out of them to knock them down and out of commission. And so if you have the expertise and the access to a larger caliber gun to keep around the house that you're not going to carry and you can see or something, you know, that's great. If you've already got a you know, 45 or a 9mm or some other caliber. But I would suggest that you that you go to the range and practice with the jacketed bullet, the solid nose. They're a little cheaper. That you if you're going to go practice, that you don't do with them. But if you and there's, there's several different kinds of these, uh, but if you're going to have something that you keep loaded to protect yourself, and some of them are really uh, uh, properly named as home defense or uh, blah, blah, blah. So, so we're talking, we're down in the nitty gritty here. This is, you know, but these classes aren't going to talk about it. They don't want to talk about the gun, much less the bullets. So, okay, we're going to, we're going to have us a 38 special, a revolver that works for it, that's tight, working good. We're going to know how to use it, and we're going to have it loaded with the proper ammunition so that if someone invades our uh, arena and is intending to, do, intending to do harm, that we've got some way to defend ourselves. All right. Then the next gun that I would recommend is a shotgun, and preferably a pump shotgun. I don't have any examples. Some of your uh, pump shotgun is uh, you pump the action using the fore end of the shotgun. You pump it to put another barrel, another round in the barrel. And again, if you if you have a shotgun, if you've got a a, a pump or a semi-automatic shotgun or a double barrel or something around that you already have. That, that functions and works properly, then I would use what I've got. But if I'm starting to buy one, then I would go and buy me a 20 gauge or a 12 gauge pump shotgun. And then, since I was buying it for home defense, I would buy the shortest barrel, the shorter the better. For obvious reasons, it's more maneuverable, it's less easy for someone to take it away from you. A long gun gives them something. It's, it's more versatile and maneuverable in close quarters. Uh, some of the some of the uh, companies make. They really are have good imagination in their titles. One I love is the Camp gun. That's a good title. You can keep it around the camp. 
that they were acting. Everybody paid attention. <laughs> you know, they knew that somebody meant business because if they had that shotgun, somebody, and they used it, somebody or several somebodies was fixing to get blown back too. So that, that, they're, they're really a weapon. They're, they're, they're a lot of power. It, it rocks you back like I'm talking about. So then the next one was the 16 gauge, which was made a lot of sense. It's kind of in between. But for some reason, the 16 gauge became very unlocked. And, and the shells are not as easy to get. And there's a few 16 gauge around. And then the most, then the next one is the 20 gauge, which is a little, a little smaller. And the 20 gauge is what I have hunted with for years and years and years. I love 20 gauge shotguns. You don't have the amount of shot and whatnot when you're putting out there, but you don't have the amount of recoil. And then, then the fun little, the little thing, why the numbers change, I don't know, ask the guy, is a 410 is the smallest shotgun. And it has a barrel on lid about, about as big as that can be. It's down pretty small. And they're, they're real good for, for kids. I, that was my shotgun that I got when I was eight years old. I hunted dove with it until I was in my early 20s. And I could shoot that thing. It will not put out very many shots. And I used to shoot with the, with the adults with that thing because I chose my shots and I, had, I was used to shooting it. So that's the range in, in, in the shotgun. Then I would recommend what we're talking about it is, it, is either a 20 or a 12. And if, if a woman's going to be shooting it and I had it to do over, I'd probably get a 20 gauge. But if you the idea is, if someone was asking me the other day, what would you do that these home invader guys, there's a lot of times there's three of them, or teams, there's three of them that come in on the home. Two or three. And so I said, well, then what I would want to do in that case is I would, I would want to use my kaboomer. I'm going to blow them, the door, and everything around it away. If I understand that they're meaning evil, the gloves are all good. You see? You see what I'm saying? Then I would want my big kaboom because I'm going to send a spray of these BBs about as big as this board at about 12 feet. Well, by then it's not going to be but about this big. It gets bigger as it goes out. But you get the drift. You would shoot the, through the door. The door doesn't mean much if you're in trouble, if your life or your family is in trouble. And you've determined that these people uh, mean business. And so the deal is, is that you, they're telling people to open your door. They don't care if you're home or not. They ring the doorbell. If nobody's home, they kick it in. If somebody enters the door, they kick them and the door. So we're talking about some really ugly stuff. There's a lot of ugly people that want to hurt people. And and, and if you're safe to pray about it at that time, or call 911, that's your decision. I don't have that much faith. I really don't. I mean, God's protected me in some really woolly situations too. I mean, I'm a faith person. But if He's given me enough sense to carry my sword, and the batters are knocking at the door, they better hang on us. I'll cut their ear off. You see what I'm saying? Because my family and my life are here are stuck here. These, these, are not, these people are not toying around. They don't care anything about our lives or our well-being. So I'm just, I'm just telling you like I see it. That's the way I see it. I want you to be protected. If what I tell you today saves your life, praise God.